Imagine digital spaces where real people are interacting, perhaps playing or learning, and certainly shaping who they are, both consciously and unconsciously. Turns out, more than a billion of us are already living our lives here. These virtual worlds are getting more and more immersive. We can interact with them via screens, augmented or virtual reality, and soon, even brain-computer interfaces, each more impactful than the last on its user's psychology. Many of you are already carrying around portals to virtual worlds in your pockets right now. While we have normalized many of its effects, the screen is a powerful medium. Triggers like endless scrolling and notifications have been finely tuned to adjust our behavior. Don't underestimate the virtual worlds you are already participating in. With the power of embodied cognition, or the understanding of where your body is in space, VR is the only medium that can provide us with a first-person experience that is not our own. Take, for example, Richie's plank experience, in which VR participants enter a simulation of walking out on a plank at the top of a skyscraper. Because VR experiences are stored in the brain as real memories, not, I saw the top of the building, but I was standing on the plank, Experiences like this have cured people of their fear of heights in real life through multiple controlled exposures. This is just one example of the power of VR. Next up are read-write brain-computer interfaces, quite literally ways to link up your brain directly with a computer. I believe they represent the final evolution of VR by eliminating all middlemen. No headset, not even your eyes, just the computer and your brain the place in which your reality is constructed. Today, people can use brain-computer interfaces to control robotic limbs, select items in a video game, and soon are even beginning to translate thoughts into text. I foresee the BCI of tomorrow allowing us to live stream our consciousness. You could tune into my channel, see the darkened audience a little bit, feel the hot lights and the slight give of the carpet under your feet. But before we dive into design, let's ground ourselves by revisiting a question that has been asked throughout time, but is asked again with a new urgency in this time of exponential technology, to remind ourselves of who we are designing for. That question is, what makes us human? Is it our opposable thumbs? Is it the ability to make fire or create a complex language? I'd like to suggest that the thing that has defined us is our ability to create representations of our own imaginations to shape the world around us. In the Anthropocene, we can see this quite clearly, having terraformed the land to provide food, or salt in this case, filled the sky with satellites to connect us, and even modified our DNA and that of other organisms. We have augmented our reality far beyond the extent that the term augmented reality implies. What gave us this ability? The ability to imagine another world and the belief in yourself that you can make it. Now we have the opportunity to create virtual worlds of our own imagination. But with great power comes great responsibility. Just as we shape our world, our world shapes us, right? Our idea of who we are, what we care about, and how we interact with each other are shaped by our experiences and environment. Even the basic virtual worlds we have created to date have shown us the impact they can have. We've seen virtual worlds empower us and disempower us at the scale of society. For that reason, I suggest this framework to help guide us as we create these virtual worlds. Digital democracy, data ownership, and design for wellness. Digital democracy, a virtual world for the people, by the people. Let's create an ecosystem that is dictated mainly by its users instead of a centralized organization. With digital democracy, the citizens of the virtual world could make decisions as to how the world functions, the accessibility of the interface, and how and if data is used, among other things. Users could vote or designate a rescindable vote on issues that shape the virtual world. Your data is you, and that is only becoming more literal as we embody avatars in these spaces. The data gathered from VR usership is hyper-personal. From head tracking to interactivity and body movement, today's headsets can already gather far more data than traditional computer interfaces. 
VR rigs are already in development that incorporate BCI input, galvanic skin response, and facial cameras. Of course, we cannot begin to imagine the increased need for data security with brain-computer interfaces. On top of digital democracy, a blockchain-based identity protection system could be implemented. Every user could store their personal information inside of a private wallet, a data storage device disconnected from the network. When another entity needed information from them, instead of sending that data, they could issue a smart key along with a contract that acts as a portal to that data for only as long as the smart contract is valid. Currently, application success is measured through the amount of time users spend on it. While I would suggest a shift toward empowering the user both inside and outside of the virtual world. In their 2014 study, Experimental Evidence of Massive Scale Emotional Contagion Through Social Networks, Facebook curated 689,000 people's news feeds to show half of them positive posts from their friends, while the other half saw only negative posts. As the behavioral scientists at Facebook had hypothesized, people's emotions and subsequent posts reflected the environment they were exposed to. While news feeds could be a verbatim timeline of things your friends share, they might be curated to incite a certain response. With VR, the power of the emotional contagion, or many of us just call it empathy, is far stronger than that of screen media. For this reason, the UN and other organizations utilize VR in their fundraising. We are empathetic beings, and we'll feel these effects more with more immersive environments. Authentic interaction, or transparency in how you interact with other people, is a key component to ensuring our virtual worlds can sustain our relationships and our trust. Looking at my newsfeed, I see reflected more and more narrowly things I've expressed interest in. Many algorithms reflect the premise that people should be shown more of what they specifically like in order to keep them on the platform for longer. While we laud open-mindedness as a positive trait, we struggle to be open-minded in a world catered to our known interests. Coming up against things that may not fit neatly within your personal brand, like meeting a stranger from a very different walk of life and hearing their story, are amazing opportunities to recognize the connections between all of us and reduce the fear that causes us to lose our ability to think clearly. Furthermore, personal branding limits our growth as individuals. I have friends that have expressed that if they post something outside of their personal brand, they'll lose followers. Let us cry out, as Walt Whitman once did, I am large, I contain multitudes. Let us embrace the diversity inside of us that helps us celebrate the diversity around us. Most of all, I would advocate for a design that encourages eternal iteration. Let's replace the traditional vision of design drafted one time by an individual or organization. The virtual world capable of fulfilling the promise of fulfilling our humanism may need to instead be a constant evolution, shaped again and again by its inhabitants, sometimes chaotic, but free and improvisational. By empowering ourselves within our virtual worlds, we protect our humanity, our imagination, and empowerment to manifest the change we wish to see in the real world, the change that could reshape our society to care for each other, to live in harmony with the environment, Creating virtual worlds that enhance our humanism and empower people inside of the simulation, but most importantly, out in the real world, is my moonshot. I look forward to the worlds, virtual and real, that we create together. Thank you.